symmetry. Imagine you could split your face in two and superimpose one side onto the other. Your eyes would line up evenly, your smile would be straight, and your nose, cheeks, and forehead would be perfectly balanced. The symmetry of our faces is determined by events that took place before we were even born. The human fetus is designed to grow in two equal parts around the central axis of the spine, but it doesn't always happen that way. Tiny genetic abnormalities, poor nutrition, even mild infections can slightly alter our facial design, leaving a permanent, if subtle, record. De Bruyne devised an experiment to test the connection between symmetry and sex appeal. She chose a man and a woman and switched into makeover mode. I'm moving the approximately 200 different points into the landmark places so we can determine exactly where the symmetries lie. Then I can calculate what's a symmetric shape for her face and warp it into that symmetric shape. Here's a picture of the same woman but wearing a different outfit and with different hair. And now I'm going to make her face less symmetric by exaggerating the symmetries that are already present in her face. Lisa mounted the pictures on a university wall, told passers-by they were twins, and asked which was the more appealing and why. She looks much more feminine in the left one. She's like slim, neat, tidy, and the other one is like a rugged man. Women on the left looks quite feminine and very well postured. Him. Okay, I'd say I find this one more attractive. This is the right one. The right side of the face seems to be in a different level than what the left side of the face was. I think he's more attractive. He has less darker circles. His lips aren't at an angle. Eight out of ten men and women preferred the symmetrical face. They're subconsciously responding to fundamental clues about physical and genetic health. Clues planted in the womb 